Hello everyone. Welcome to Dr. Raj Kumar Academy. Welcome to the session on 23-1-2023. So, in this, first let us talk about same issue guys. At least from last 10-20 days, like you know, same, every day same thing. I am also discussing the same. So, what is it all about? Rijuju endorses former high court judges view that top court hijacked the constitution. See guys, recently one Delhi retired judge said that Supreme Court has hijacked the constitution by saying that it is the sole authority to decide upon the appointment of the judges. This is wrong. How can judges appoint judges? Fine. So that is the criticism. So Rijiju says many people are of the opinion that yes, judges appointing judges is wrong. This needs to be corrected. So the issue between the executive and the judiciary continues. It's a very, very important topic. I have already given you from all the perspectives. See guys, what many newspaper analysis is doing, every day they keep on repeating the same aspects. And I know the people who are watching here, they're regular and they know what is happening. I don't want to, like you know, again bring in those aspects. Exim data revised. Trade deficit narrows by 10 billion dollar. Fine, Exim data revised. Trade deficit narrows by 10 billion dollar. What is the meaning of this guys? Exports between April and November, like you know, when we look at it, the data has been revised and the deficit has reduced. So many economists are actually saying that how can you revise the data and how can there be so much variation? See guys, there will be something called as expected and there will be something called as actual payment. Fine. So normally what would have happened, you would feel like, okay, this much is going and you will get this much. But after tax deductions or actual payments or according to agreement, some other payments needs to be made. So when you look at all those aspects, finally, the actual numbers would be different. So predictions would be different and actual numbers would be different. So every month, like you know, let us say 31st, the month ends, 3rd or 4th, they give estimates. They say that, okay, in the month of January, we had exported this much and we had imported this much. So this, they do it immediately. Fine. So whenever they do such things, what happens after six to nine months, they will sit again and check every month's data properly. Fine. And when they are checking these data, they have got to know that. Fine. So exports has increased, but at the same time, imports has also increased. So when we look at both exports and imports, now the trade deficit had narrowed by 10 billion. It's not that trade deficit is 10 billion. You see export is what? 298.3. Import is what? 493.5. So what is the variation? Almost 200 billion dollar is there. Correct. Right? Is the variation. But compared to earlier, now it has been 10 billion dollar. See, guys, India is an import-based country where our imports will be extremely high compared to exports, mainly because most of it is through the oil, natural gas, which is the basic demand for the country and India lacks those reserves. So, blaming the country doesn't make any sense with respect to these variations. But calculation part, I would like to tell you something. India is purchasing oil from Russia. So there are sanctions, there are many variations. We do not know what is happening in that particular part. 10 killed in shooting near Los Angeles. 
after festival so guys in united states of america normally there will be some sort of shooting guys white people when they get angry that like you know someone has come and taken our land right so they become psychos and they take guns they go and shoot so this is a very common thing in america fine so here you see <coughs> here also like you know one guy he has shot on a new year celebration that attracted thousands so this is extremely common there when we say crimes in india hindu muslim fighting right uh, which has reduced drastically thanks for that but lynching or something else in us this is very common fine that's why many people call it white terrorism but us and all says it is some sort of psychological problem you can't call it as terrorism because like you know there is no political party there is no agenda for these people they are angry about what is happening and they have taken up the arms but when it comes to terrorism someone is training them with the help of religion like you know they tell that uh, the religion is preaching you this that is the reason you need to follow these aspects and then they perform so that's where the problem actually comes changing politics incompatible governors because this article tries to say how there was a change in the atmosphere before and how there is change in atmosphere today with respect to governors so let me say during vajpay period bjp alone could not win elections so what bjp did bjp made alliances with other political parties and they came to power who were these alliances these alliances were from states as they were from the states so states were given more power because alliances has to be happy now what happened after 2014 bjp by itself has got 300 plus plus today they have less alliances that means less state parties that means they want to give less power as they want to give less power they are taking away the power of governor fine this is the issue is that is happening that is through governor they are trying to take the power of the states election bugle so let me talk about this little bit guys <coughs> is when we talk about northeast india today there are three states which are going for elections i'm not talking about the elections but i want you to know what is the uh, internal security challenges with these three meghalaya tripura nagaland see guys in meghalaya we have like you know garo khasi jaintia three groups are there these are three mountains as well and three tribal communities as well the garo people they want to establish garo land 
and they want to be separated from Meghalaya. They have arms, right? And they are fighting against the forces. So in these areas, what BJP has tried to do, BJP has tried to make alliances with each one of these so that they all have some power. So you see, when Garo people want to move out and when we give them some power, they will be happy. So, not with Garo people, but many uh, parties in the region, BJP is trying to make alliances with them so that there won't be any insurgency activities. That is, people will give up arms. And when I look at Tripura, guys, in Tripura, earlier we had a communist party and this party ruled almost for 20 years and then BJP has come to power. And Tripura is a bordering state with Bangladesh. And Tripura has tribal communities a lot. Because of this, they have something called as autonomous district councils. And in this, there is a political party which says that we should be given more powers. That is the tribal areas must be given more powers. And whoever will give more powers, I will support them, whether it is BJP or whether it is communist. So the biggest issue now is with respect to this tribal groups which are looking for more powers. <coughs> Whenever we give more powers to one community, the issue will be other states will also start demanding the same way which would lead to more problems in Northeast. So we should be careful in dealing with that. In Naga land, guys, we had something called as NSCN, IM. Like, you know, it's a insurgency group which wanted Naga land to be separated from India. Later, like, you know, there is peace talks with these people. Indian government spoke to each one of these groups and now they have ensured that the peace talks are going on. Fine guys, now they have ensured that the peace talks are going on. And after the peace talks, these groups have established, like you know, political parties. Political parties. And they have joined with the BJP and they are in power. So remember what is happening here. Insurgency groups who have taken up arms, they have joined BJP and they have entered into elections. It's actually a good news, guys, because when these groups enter, it would benefit us because terrorism and other things would reduce. A reminder of the flaws in India's urbanization policies. This urbanization is one of the biggest problem for India. Right? So, India thought of going for smart city programs. India thought of Amrut, Atal mission for rejuvenation. India also thought of Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, that is home to the slum dwellers. Even when India did all these things, unfortunately, urbanization is not successful. Urbanization is a failure. Urban problems are increasing mainly because, see guys, central government and state government will do the policies 
and they will implement it in urban areas whereas whereas when we look at uh, this particular case what is happening if local people from urban areas plan and implement it would be better fine guys this is what it tries to tell when local people when they try to plan and implement it would be better that is we should go for bottom up approach rather than going for top down approach fine guys so this is what the article is trying to talk about urbanization is an important issue guys so it's very very important for us to look into this fine just write down guys uh, urban infrastructure urban infrastructure below this you right schemes schemes smart city mission smart city mission second amrut amrut third pradhan mantri awas yojana next guys you right urban capital expenditures urban capital expenditures i feel 48% from central government 48% from central government 24% from state government Fifteen percent from city governments, PPP projects three percent, commercial debt two percent. next point even though even though urban areas contribute contribute 85% of 85% of government revenues government revenues come the money is not sufficient to rising to rising urban infrastructure next point cities must adopt cities must adopt bottom up approach bottom up approach by ensuring by ensuring that by ensuring that local problems are identified local problems are identified and resolved okay so guys here they have given that like you know south indian states and west states that is uh, like you know gujarat rajasthan and all 
they have not performed well when it comes to solving max problems case. Because there was blast in Jammu Kashmir, so government is more worried about the yatra that is going on. Whoever is the leader, guys, it's very, very important to protect their lives. Opposition is very important. So every life matters and political parties, especially the Congress and all, they have lost the significant leaders. India has lost two prime ministers. So we should be providing proper security to the people. U.S. mission to increase, so guess Tamil Nadu, so some names are there, they are trying to create trouble even with respect to that. So don't worry about these type of aspects. Rise in attempts to revive militancy in Punjab, say speakers at police meet. Yes, Punjab is a state which has border with Pakistan and in Punjab there is some sort of what we call as a, like you know a Khalistan movement and sometimes Pakistanis try to use this to create trouble in India but measures have been taken to reduce them. Economy at risk from move to clean energy. See, whenever we want to shift towards renewable energy it's very easy to tell that we should shift. But I'll tell you, see, the core of any economy is power, guys. That is electricity. And that determines industrial development of a region. And this electricity is mostly from coal, which is easy and which is also available to us. Fine. Which is very easy. And it is also easily available to us. So, electricity in India is cheaper because of the coal. Now, if I shift to solar, if I shift to wind, and if I see, electricity will be costly. And if electricity is costly, like you know, products will become costly. Correct? Now you see, Indian products are costly. Chinese products are cheap. So everyone will purchase Chinese products. They will not purchase Indian products. So, we all will be in trouble. Correct, guys? So, if we have to shift, what we need is technology. We need a technology of what? Renewable energy and which will give us or which will take less money. So, that electricity is produced at cheaper cost <coughs> for this India says we need trillions of dollars and we are expecting that developed countries will fund some of these projects this is what the article is trying to tell us nothing much guys Money wise, world news, gunmen, the new year one they have given. India tumbles not required. Yeah. Thank you, guys. These were the important issues.